Me, me, me. No. <laughs> okay. I'm Allison Roman, and I'm making a regular size Thanksgiving in a very small kitchen. I look forward to Thanksgiving the way I feel like a lot of people look forward to pretty much every other holiday, and that is because it is the one holiday a year where it is super reasonable and definitely acceptable to just eat all day and to be like drunk at four and to have dessert at five and to just kind of do it all over again at midnight. It's insane. It literally doesn't make any sense the way that we do things, but it is perfect and I love it and it's my favorite. I'm dealing with limited space. I have a small kitchen, so I do things a little bit differently. And that means that yes, I defrost my turkey on a sheet pan in my bathtub. It also means that I don't have sweet potatoes on my menu because it's my menu and I don't like sweet potatoes. While this video is not about hot takes, I will say that I have some opinions. I mean, I'll give you context, baby. I'll, I got context all day long. I don't, I don't think pumpkin pie is good. I think pumpkin pie is bad. Marshmallows in your food is disgusting. Full stop. Yeah, I'm not one of those people that thinks that we should eat Thanksgiving at three. I think that's literally insane. Sweetened squash, it's fine. I love vegetables. I don't necessarily want them cooked with um, canned mushroom soup. Call me crazy. It's mushy, it's a soft food. I don't like soft food, especially when people make their own pumpkin puree for a pumpkin pie. It's awful. I'm glad we had that talk. But this year, it's in my house. It's my Thanksgiving, 100%. So for me, it's not about reinventing the wheel when it comes to Thanksgiving. It's about taking the general framework. Like there's a turkey, a potato, a stuffing, a green bean, an orange vegetable, a gravy, and a cranberry sauce. And taking the flavor profiles and ingredients that you like in your everyday food and cooking and incorporating them. I am not what you call a planner. I don't think ahead. I don't work in advance. So for those people that are like, I make Thanksgiving meal plans three weeks ahead, good for you. That is not what I am about. The Thanksgiving shopping really starts two days before with picking up the turkey. Let's take the ticket off my car. It's also covered in leaves. It's like I'm trying to camouflage the car with leaves. I see you, it's still there. So I'm going to Paisano's, which is my local butcher shop, to get my turkey. Make sure that you do it two days in advance because one day is just really not enough to thaw it. And plus you need that day for brining and blah. <laughs> that it's open or don't bother? No, 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 don't bother. How about how many pounds is this one? 16. Do you guys want a snack? Kind of. Okay. Can we get a sandwich? These are also so good and I, I'm gonna buy them. Ever had my sauce? No, never had your sauce. It's the best. Is it? Okay. It's the best. One of the best sauces. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now we're gonna walk back, which luckily I don't live too far because this turkey is extremely heavy. I give myself like a block and a half before I'm absolutely fatigued and like need to have somebody carry this for me. Just kidding, I do it myself. Independent woman. So that brings us to today. I've got my Thanksgiving safari shirt on. I'm ready for anything. I'm going to do the last of my grocery shopping. I'm going to write out a list for my to-dos tomorrow and I'm gonna do some light prep work to get ahead. I love grocery shopping. Um, onions, potatoes, shallots, green beans, and thyme and lemons. At a grocery store, I'm pretty much always going in for specific things because otherwise I'll be in here for five hours and I will never come out. Love to shop time. It like does not matter how many times I've been to a grocery store, I never remember where things are. <laughs> These are my favorite eggs because they come with a bird of the month. This bird of the month is named Magnificent Megan. I love her. No? How many? Eight. Too small. I've never met that limit in my life. Thank you. Cool. Developing a menu that is easily executed within a few hours is actually the best thing that you can do for yourself. Everything is better when it's made the day of, I think. I feel pretty confident and extremely relaxed, actually. Oh my God, how did we not get rid of all this squat? Oh my God, this is just, oh my God. It's worse than I thought, people. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Anything that doesn't absolutely need to be in here for Thanksgiving, it's gotta go. It cannot be in here. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. 
which is why I put everything in a cooler. Lime pickle does not need to be in here right now. But anything that can kind of handle spending some time in a cooler for about 24 hours, put it in the cooler, get it out of your mind. Um, it's gonna make you feel like you have so much more space and breathing room and not make you feel like an insane person when you go to put stuff in your fridge. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my crust for the deep dish galette. It's kind of a tart, it's kind of a pie, it's kind of a galette. It is a crust with a bunch of apples inside of it. So it's good and you want it for sure. And this crust is like basically, it's a really good all-purpose crust. This is the problem with a small refrigerator. I can't find literally anything in here. Where does, oh, I found it. I feel like apple pie is good. I feel like it's never that good. I'm definitely a galette girl. Galette girl fall, can we do that? No? <laughs> okay. That said, I feel like a galette is a little quiet visually or maybe doesn't feel as special. And people really like the drama for the holidays. This deep dish galette really does sort of fill the void of the pie and also satisfy me in the way a galette does. The best of two worlds. It's tall, it's dramatic looking, it's got a lot of fruit filling, but it's also open so the filling gets nicely cooked down. I think it's kind of perfect. Wow, I just got flour everywhere. It's fine, I live here. There's no pumpkin at this Thanksgiving? There's no pumpkin at this Thanksgiving. I mean, I'll give you context, baby. I don't think pumpkin pie is good. I think pumpkin pie is bad. Great, got it. <laughs> I mean, where do you go? I could keep going. I think it's a horrible dessert. You have your butter, your flour, your sugar, your salt in this bowl. Toss it to kind of coat each butter cube. And what I do is I just flatten them in my palm like that. And I just kind of keep doing that. I'll just kind of squish the butter like that. I'm not super precious about it. The person who taught me how to make the best pie crust is my friend Sarah Sene from Pies and Thighs in Brooklyn. And she told me that when I'm adding the water to the pie crust that I should run my fingers through it like I'm running fingers through hair, which has always stuck with me and that's what I always think of when I'm making this. I think the number one mistake people make when making pie crust or they wonder why theirs isn't flaky enough is that they're adding too much water because they look at a bowl that looks like this and they're saying there's no way that's gonna roll out, why is it so sandy? Just keep mixing it because it will come together. You add more water and it might become easier to mix, but what you're gonna get is a tougher, less flaky pie crust, and that's not what we want. Yeah, it looks a little shaggy, but as it rests, it's gonna come together, it's gonna hydrate, and it's gonna become something that I can roll out and be very, very nice to work with. So this is gonna go in the fridge until I'm ready to make my galette tomorrow. I need some privacy while I find some space in here. <laughs> Please respect me at this time. <laughs> So the second thing I'm gonna do the day before Thanksgiving is I'm going to tear my bread for the stuffing. Fresh bread is gonna immediately turn to mush. So for me, it's like the day old stale air dried bread that is the perfect texture for stuffing. I do think I can, well, <laughs> I feel like the weakest woman alive to <laughs> see me try to rip that bread. Oh my God, that was pathetic. I'm very strong. When you tear your bread, here, let me, allow me. I actually have an extra loaf of bread. I'm gonna show you something. Here's what happens when you cut your bread. A, boring shape, extremely boring. B, it's all flat. There's no, like this could get crispy, maybe, I don't know, eh. This to me is so much more exciting and there's so much more possibility for like nooks and crannies and crispy bits and wispy bits and crustedy bits. And this feels one dimensional and looks ugly. Are we cool? We everybody got that? We got it. <laughs> okay. And that's, the stew. and that's the stew. There is nothing I care about more at Thanksgiving than the stuffing. I will fight anyone who tells me that this is the wrong way to make it. Get your oysters away from my stuffing. Get your dried fruit away from my stuffing. Oysters. Yeah. Right. People put smoked oysters in their stuffing. People from New England. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> As a general rule, starting with really good bread will give you a really good stuffing. I'm sweating. Sure wish I had a knife right about now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would never cut bread for my stuffing, not ever. To get this out of my way, I'll honestly probably put this on my coffee table in the living room, but you just kind of want to put it out of sight in a draft-free place where like, if you have an animal, they're not gonna eat it or something. Um, but I leave it uncovered, just kind of tucked away somewhere. Oh, hi. <laughs> I've got my turkey. It was previously thawing in the bathtub just to make sure that it was totally unfrozen and then I transferred it to the refrigerator and now I'm going to prepare it. There's a lot of juice happening in here and I wanna make sure that it gets on the sheet tray and not on my work surface. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Sergey's trying to ruin my life. I am gonna take the neck out and I'm gonna use it to make my broth. It's something that my grandpa Bob always used to do, which reminds me of him. He would simmer it the night before and then he would eat the turkey neck meat and I was always like, ah, gross. But now I see that it is in fact delicious and the right thing to do. There's no cute way to do this. So I'm honestly, we're trying our best here. This is really not enough meat or turkey to make a stock from scratch. Instead, I'm gonna make a cheater's stock, which means that I'm gonna use the parts of the turkey that I can, and I'm gonna fortify store-bought stock with my turkey parts, maybe some extra aromatics like leftover celery, maybe some thyme that I've got that I know I'm not gonna use all of, some onions. I'm gonna simmer that until I have about five cups, and that way I'll use it all for the menu. Now is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is the time where I'm going to season the turkey for tomorrow. And there's a lot of conversation about brining, dry brining, wet brining. This is a very basic brine because I think that there's so much other flavor going on on your Thanksgiving table. Honestly, by the time you smother it with gravy and eat it with your garlicky mashed potatoes and your leaky stuffing and whatever, you can't taste the nuance in your turkey anyway. But I'm keeping it simple, I'm keeping it classic keeping it salty, sweet, peppery. And no, I will not accept pre-ground pepper for this. It's not good. Don't ever use it for anything, sorry. So this is our brine. It's salt, pepper, sugar. That's it. I always really struggle with this part. So you wanna try to get it on all sides. And like with these kind of weird parts, it's almost like trying to get sprinkles to stick on the side of a cake. You just gonna wanna pack it on to each little bit, knowing that yes, it'll fall off like this, but we can always pat it back on. I'm gonna tuck the wings. So the reason I do that is so I can expose this part of the wing, which I wanna get as brown as possible. I'm gonna put this in the fridge uncovered and let it hang out until tomorrow when I'm ready to roast it. I'm gonna let that keep simmering for another hour or so, then I'll strain it, put that away. I'll make my to-do list. I will try to hydrate. I'm gonna get some sleep because tomorrow is a big day. Good morning, everybody. It is officially Thanksgiving day and I have everything I need miraculously enough. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my galette in the oven. If you had the time, you could also do it the night before, but just because I am who I am, I'm gonna do it the morning of first thing. Okay. Absolutely rude. That does not help. I can still hear it. I don't know who's out there trimming trees on Thanksgiving day, but they're out there and we can hear it. So we're just gonna go with it. it Brooklyn, we love it. New York, the big apple. So I'm gonna use about two and a half pounds of apples because it's open at the top with no double crust. The filling cooks down really nicely without any risk of it being like soupy or watery. So you can kind of cut these however you want, but I kind of like this triangular cut. That way you get some mushier parts and some thicker parts. And I leave the skin on. I haven't used my peeler since 2004. Did the thing where I was like, oh, you should come over for Thanksgiving. It's my friends. It's like now turned into a thing. So it's Thanksgiving, but also a party. Which honestly, Thanksgiving should be anyway. I feel like if your Thanksgiving isn't a bit of a party, you should be having a different type of Thanksgiving maybe. Or have two Thanksgivings. Have like your regular Thanksgiving and then like your party Thanksgiving. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season the apples with honey, sugar, salt, and some vinegar and a little bit of flour for extra thickening. So I'm gonna toss this. Actually, this is a late-breaking addition. Last time I had this, I was like, I wish that there was cinnamon in it. Just a little bit. By the time we roll out that crust, the juices will have started to come out and it'll be like a very nice saucy sitch for which the apples to coat themselves in. Okay, it's a bit of a wild ride in here. I'm not proud. Where's my crust? Oh, there she is. Excuse me. It's fine. So I'm gonna roll this out. I've let it sit on my counter for a few minutes just until it's kind of like, you wanna be able to just press it. And I've already gotten flour all over my shirt, so we're on the right track. Make sure that you lift it up from time to time and just like dust the underside. And there's like a lot of delicious, soupy goopy business happening in here. I always find this is the easiest way to transfer your crust to anything. And then from here you're kind of encouraging it to slump into the sides. I should also mention this works in a deep dish, pie dish, or just a regular pie dish. You just may need to adjust the amount of apples that go in. Oh uh, yeah. You just fold the crust over like you would a galette. 
You want like about an inch and a half of a border. This is an optional garnish, but it does taste really, really good on the crust. And then some more sugar. And this can go on top of the apples as well. Okay, our galette is in the oven. It smells really good already. Um, I am on my 28th cup of coffee for the day. And right now, we're just gonna kind of prep some stuff. I'm not a huge fan of doing everything ahead, but I am a huge fan of getting as prepared as humanly possible. For right now, that means take the stems off the green beans, fry the shallots, tear the kale, but I'm not gonna make it until later. I don't worry about this tail, I only worry about the stem end. I'll grab a few at a time and then twist off the ends, and that's that. All right, really wishing I had like 20 kids right now <laughs> to come help me do this great task for children. If you're gonna ask somebody else to do this, you gotta sell it as something really fun. Like, oh, I wish I had the time. It's honestly my favorite part of Thanksgiving. Anything you want other people to do, like taking the stems off the green beans, picking herbs, like getting ice, um, washing dishes, like, oh, I wish I had the time. I wish I had the time. I just don't have the time. You are lucky, you get to do it. I just don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in here? Looking nice. Not nice enough. The green beans are sauteed in like a shallot oil. And how do we get shallot oil? We fry shallots in oil. And that does two things. It gives us shallot oil, but it also gives us crispy shallots. I just kind of prefer my vegetables on the table to be a bit lighter, a bit brighter, a bit more how I like to eat regularly. I love vegetables, so I want more of them on the table and I don't necessarily want them cooked with canned mushroom soup. Call me crazy. My squash and my green beans tend to be less casserole-y, less traditional, more kind of vibrant, fresh vegetable sides that I would honestly eat any time of the year. My mise en place for the green beans is pretty much taken care of, so I'm just gonna save this oil because I'm gonna use it to cook my green beans later. All right, stuffing. This is probably the thing on the planet that I care the most about. I love my family, I love my cat, I love my apartment, I love my job. I would die for stuffing. It is so perfect. It also makes my body feel horrible <laughs> afterwards. It's essentially old bread soaked in butter and baked. I like to use equal parts butter and oil because I feel like the oil makes it actually a bit richer than just using butter alone. I'm also gonna use this opportunity to take the turkey out of the fridge. Okay, I feel like I can breathe again in here. Thank God. Stuffing, where was I? I prefer simple and classic and salty and so much celery, you can't even believe it. So that's where we're going today with this. I like a lot of black pepper in my stuffing as well. Oh, Galette's done. You hear that? Yeah, I think she's done. Looks pretty done to me. All right, let me get a... Let me also, no, because... No, this room is crooked and it's gonna settle crooked. So it's gonna go right there. It's gonna stay where I should have just kept it the first time. Okay, so our leeks are super nice, golden, melty, delicious. I just added the celery, and I'm really just cooking that till it's bright green. I like the bit of texture that it gives to the stuffing, so I don't really wanna cook it too much. And now I'm gonna add some dry white wine. So our herbs go in here. I feel like I'm going spelunking every time I go in here. You definitely want to use your biggest bowl for this. You want the right amount of egg to bind it, to keep it custardy, delicious, fluffy. So whisking it constantly is going to prevent the eggs from coagulating or cooking when adding something hot to them. So to that, I'm gonna add my bread, I'm gonna to toss it, and I'm gonna let it soak. This is what happens to it overnight. It's not something that I'd want to eat now, per se. It's like pretty hard and brittle and like not appetizing. But what it's gonna do is gonna make sure that it holds up and keeps its shape and integrity when it gets soaked in this sort of brothy egg mixture. It looks like it's never gonna all incorporate, but soon all of this liquid will be incorporated into all this bread. So stuffing gets baked 
choice. Once is to cook it through to bake the egg, but the second bake is where things get wonderful, and that's when I take the foil off, I dot it with the rest of this butter, and I crank the heat and I let the top get really nice and crispy. It's very good to me. You don't want to pack it too tightly because then it'll be dense. This one's a little more shallow, but I think that's fine. Unless I want to bake it in a cake pan. I do. Ha! So I'm doing this for a friend of mine who said that I would never use this cake pan. Guess what? Oh. Oh. Does it fit perfectly? Is it extremely cute? Honestly, worth dirtying an extra pan, just to prove a point. So you have the custardy soft interior and the crunchy, crispy, golden exterior, and it's so good. I am so excited. She's going in. 375 for 25-ish minutes. Just to recap, our galette is done and baked. Our stuffing is out of the oven for the first time. Our green beans are pretty much ready to go. They're all prepped. They just need to be cooked, which will take like five minutes. Our turkey is brined. She's ready to go into the oven. So it's already seasoned. I'm not gonna worry about that. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna pour a little bit of oil and butter over it just to kind of help the crisping process. I'm gonna roast it alongside some onions and some lemons, which are gonna cook down and get caramelized while the turkey roasts, which we're gonna eat when we eat the turkey. I will save these scraps and I will use them for my stock that I'm gonna make later tonight. I like to kind of grease the sheet pan just lightly and I'll add some thyme to the bottom. There's a lot going on. We gotta move this. <laughs> I'm absolutely running out of space. This is going back in the living room. Look how much liquid came off. I'm gonna stuff the turkey with a few onions, like maybe some of the garlic, one or two lemons in thyme, but most of that is to get scattered around, not inside. I like the way that it cooks more evenly when there's stuff inside the bird, but not packed full of something like stuffing. Spoon about half of my butter oil mixture on. I'm not gonna brush it because then I think you lose a lot of those peppercorns, which I like. I am just gonna give it one final sprinkle of salt all over. Not as much as I would if I were seasoning it from the beginning, but just as like a good night kiss, if you will. Recap time. Our turkey's in the oven. Our galette is done. Our stuffing has been baked one time. Well, is that all we've done today? No, I can't be right. No, our green beans are prepped. <laughs> and now we're gonna prep our squash because as soon as that turkey comes out, our squash is gonna go in. Although, you know, we have some time, but I'm just letting you know what we're doing. Squash, orange vegetable. I think that every Thanksgiving table needs a green vegetable and an orange vegetable. If the galette was the hardest thing you've done all day, this is definitely the most dangerous. I wrote this recipe as sort of like a thing that you could use carrots, squash, or sweet potatoes with because I want you to be flexible with it. I'm gonna toss this with a lot of maple syrup and olive oil to kind of get at that sticky sweet feeling that you're wanting at the table. What are we having Thanksgiving? <laughs> That wasn't even a good joke. I don't know what that was. I'm so sorry. And so there's basically two components to this dish. It's the squash, and then there's this toasted hazelnut lemon sort of sprinkle thing. And I know my turkey's in there, but I have a space underneath it, which will allow me to have one very thin sheet tray that I can toast something on at the same time. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna drink this coffee. <laughs> and what else can I do? I think I'm gonna move on to my potatoes. I have a lot of opinions on mashed potatoes. They're delicious, and I would never, ever suggest otherwise. It is a soft food. I don't love soft foods. They're just, there's no texture in them. I want texture. I feel like if you're gonna do mashed potatoes, they gotta be creamy. So I, instead of trying to even enter myself into that conversation, I'm just going straight crushed. These potatoes are cute little waxy potatoes. I don't have to cut them, so that's one less thing for me to do. And you can eat the skin, which is also one less thing that I have to do. To prep these, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil them in salted water until they are tender. And the second component to the dish, we have cream, I'm gonna add some butter, garlic, and then salt, and lots of cracked pepper. These potatoes are gonna make you wish you were never born. <laughs> Ew. Those are perfect. <laughs> Always one. Honestly, we think turkey's the star of Thanksgiving. It's really black pepper. I'm feeling actually very good. That's happening, this is happening. I'm gonna get together my leafy salad. The leafy salad is just like a delicious, peppery, lemony green to kind of cut through everything else that's going on on the table. I'm gonna use the rest of these celery leaves. Be sure to drop at least half of it on the floor. 
I'm not gonna dress this yet, but I am gonna keep it in like this in the fridge. That way when it comes time to serve, all I'm doing is sprinkling salt and seasoning it with lemon and some olive oil and putting it on the table. Our water is boiling, so I'm gonna add my potatoes. Be gentle. There we go. I'm gonna rotate my turkey. Oh my God, it's time. Let's see where she's at. So you can take these drippings in here, or better yet, the oil butter mixture we reserve. You wanna be able to slice through it easily and effortlessly. Mission accomplished. All right. They're making sounds. Can you hear that, Gina? Wow. There's really not a ton more that I can do right this second, or rather, not a ton more that needs to be done right this second. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna kind of prep my living room area and my dining room area. My rule is generally that I don't set the table. I set out plates, I set out silverware, people can help themselves. I'm not gonna use a tablecloth and I certainly am not gonna be using any linens. We're gonna have glasses for wine, we're gonna have silverware, and we're gonna have plates. And we're probably gonna use paper towels for napkins. That's just the way that I live my life. All right, so I am basting this guy at the two and a half hour mark. I'm gonna crank the heat, crust up the skin even more, and then I'm gonna take it out and let it rest. All right, now is the time um, where I talk about something that I feel like is probably maybe the most controversial thing of this whole shebang. And that is, I genuinely prefer canned cranberries to uh, fresh homemade cranberries. The canned stuff is really good and I really like, ah! I really love the ridges on the edge of the can. It's the perfect texture. It's like basically an excuse to eat jello with dinner and I think it's cool. I like to serve it with fresh oranges and a little bit of thinly sliced red onion that I've soaked in water. Um, for texture, for crunch, it's kind of like a salad-y moment. I'm not gonna start with wine yet because all my wine is still chilling, but I will, while I'm finishing cooking, have like a drink because Lord knows I earned it. Um, this is just some vermouth on ice. Oh my God, this can opener again. It's like every time is the first time. That's so dumb. It is the best can opener, but it makes me feel like such an idiot. No! <laughs> Ugh, my God, okay. I like to have one at either end of the table, especially because the table's long. Pass the cranberries, pass the cranberries. It's like, ugh, I can't pass any more. Because you know everybody's gonna be talking about the cranberries. Holy Moses. Sorry, we got a late breaking situation here. This turkey, she's coming out. She doesn't care the cranberries are happening. This is real time, people. Oh boy. All right. I feel like I'm having a baby. <laughs> I've obviously never had a baby. I know this is not as hard as having a baby. Ooh. 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 Okay. She looks very good. I'm actually just gonna put it back in. Um, we set a timer for 15 minutes. Is that on top of the 16-minute Oh no, there's 16 minutes left? Well, that's why, that's, it was a false alarm. We're gonna keep on keeping on and you can do whatever you want with that in the editing room. <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs> Has one vermouth. It's like, the turkey's ready. <laughs> this is the most fun a person can have. So, it's worth making them this way. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, we're literally a cartoon. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> Here's what, you know what, here's what I did last time and it actually d made it all the difference. Just run a knife around it. Oh, boink. How fun was that? <laughs> okay, um, we'll do the same here. Save ourselves the humiliation this time. I like to just slice them like that. This is like, is this what they do on ASMR channels? They slice through stuff like this? I'm cool, I get it. Hello, young people. <laughs> And yeah, we'll just kind of layer it with onion. It should be like equal parts cranberry orange. This is like really not a recipe. It's more of an idea. And because this is kind of like a salady ish situation, I'm gonna season it with salt, pepper, olive oil. Mm, isn't that cute? I feel like it's extremely cute. Let's get it together. This turkey's, this turkey's coming out. Please disregard my former <laughs> panicked comment. 
Oh. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so our turkey's out of the oven, which means it's time to put our squash in. The sun is going down. My friend Anoop is here to make a cheese board. Things are really happening. I have not yet changed, but I feel good. I feel confident. I feel ready. I feel hungry. People are gonna start coming over soon, but that's why Anoop's here to make cheese so I don't have to feel like I need to have dinner ready as soon as they walk in the door. These get tossed with olive oil, maple syrup, paprika, and chili flake. Oh, it's off, that's cool. <laughs> anyway, when the turkey comes out, don't turn the oven off. Feeling a little behind, it's okay. Hazelnuts, and they don't have to be super fine or anything, it's more just like, you don't want them rolling off the squash. Happy Thanksgiving! Oh my God, thanks! Yay! I'm just slightly behind. I'm just doing the last few things. You guys can hang wherever in silence over there. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna start to get a little, that and that's fine. just fine, right? Yeah, okay. Just... And it's gonna get lemon zest, I'm gonna toss it together, and I'll just put it on the table. That way, when my squash is out of the oven, I can put that on a platter, and we can sprinkle it on the table. I feel like I'm moving faster now, because I have to. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh my God, happy Thanksgiving. One here. Um, what am I doing? All right, green beans. These are gonna happen in a skillet. And they're gonna happen very fast. Thank God we already tore our kale and sliced our garlic because now I don't have to do that. I'm gonna add the beans. Salt and pepper. I'm also gonna add anchovies. The reason these are in here um, is not just because I'm trolling you all and I need to put anchovies in every single dish, but they really do add like a meaty depth of flavor to the green beans. I'm not gonna chop them up beforehand because they're just gonna dissolve into the skillet. And yeah, I'm using the whole tin. It's a small tin, all right? Oh my God. Yeah. You guys, he's really outdone himself over here. Uh, my potatoes, all I need to do is reheat my cream and then chop my chives. These look so, so crazy good. I'm gonna taste one. I'm gonna add a knob of butter. I'm gonna let that wilt down. I'm gonna season them with a little bit of vinegar and they're gonna go on this plate and I'm gonna move it out of my way. So they're a little bit saucy. They're a lot of bit garlicky and anchovy, but they're still really bright and acidic. Chris, you wanna help me? This is a good place um, to outsource, so just crush them like this. This is probably the most fun. If the galette was the hardest, if doing the squash was the most dangerous, <laughs> if the cranberries are the most delicious, then this is the most fun. fun. That's too smashed, I think. Too smashed? What? A dish is for the most fun. Oh my God, that's right. I can't wait to do dishes later, but I might not have time, which is really, <laughs> which is really unfortunate because it's honestly my favorite thing, but whoever gets to do them sure is lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you finish those. I'm gonna get the sour cream. Those need like another 15. Things are, <laughs> things are really happening. While the squash roasts, I'm going to transfer this turkey to the cutting board so I can make the gravy from the pan drippings. I didn't add any liquid to this. This is all just juice and drippings from the inside of the turkey. This in here is why the gravy is gonna taste so good. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is this thing. <laughs> Do it in real time, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Take the stuffing in and out of the oven. Okay, I'm gonna dot the edges with butter just so they get a little crispier. Now is the gravy, which means we are almost done. So this is my broth from yesterday. I'm gonna start with six tablespoons of butter and I'm gonna brown the butter first. And I think, you know, I know that to be an improper technique to make a roux. It's definitely not how you classically make a gravy, but I have not paid attention to anything that you're supposed to do this whole time, so why would I start now? We have a real situation over there. This board is coming together. So Anoop is not a professional cheese board maker, but you would not know that given the level of cheese board that we're looking at here tonight. A few things have changed since we last met. I am now in a different outfit because I have swept through my old one. The only things we have left to do are to finish the potatoes and make the gravy. I'm gonna make the gravy right now because that can actually sit. The potatoes, I like to do the very last thing. So in here I have brown butter, which I was making previously and then stopped. Flour goes in. Everybody that has arrived is in the other room. They're eating the cheese board. Hey, hi everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're whisking, we're whisking, we're whisking. Okay, so this looks pretty thin, I know, but we're gonna let it cook down and it's gonna be the perfect texture, I promise. 
We are extremely close. Stuffing is ready to come out. Wow. <laughs> You'll notice that I've gotten progressively less composed. This oven is gonna get thrown out of the window. So what I'm gonna do is as I carve the turkey, I'm gonna put any unusable meat, bones, gristle, etc., into this pot so I can make stock later. And also when the carcass is done, I'm not gonna leave it out. I'm gonna put it in this pot. Can somebody come and grab this stuffing and put it on the table? Whew. Okay. To get the skin to kind of stay on, I really just hold it in place and use a sharp knife. Um, will somebody come in here and help me finish the potatoes? We're gonna do it where I'm gonna tell you what he's doing, but he's doing it. So he's adding the cream mixture to the potatoes, and then he's gonna take a wooden spoon, and he's gonna kind of crush the potatoes more as he mixes in with the cream. Keep stirring, and then you're gonna actually, so I'm adding a little bit of sour cream as we're mixing in. You can get a little bit more violent with the mix. I'm gonna add like half of these. You're almost there. I didn't tell anybody what time we were eating, which is also like the key to hosting a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> Never tell anyone anything. Set expectations extremely low. Ooh, don't forget this. All the bits that when you scoop like the lemons and the onions out, there's probably like a pool of really delicious looking liquid. Make sure that you pour that over everything. And then I always finish with some more pepper. Because again, pepper is really the star of Thanksgiving. And don't you forget it. Great, take a thousand. Potatoes are done, turkey is carved, gravy is hot. I'm gonna season it with a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of vinegar. To me, this is the perfect thickness of gravy. I want it to be like silky and spoonable. Mm, that is really good. Everything is ready, I think, which I never thought the day would come, but here we are. Forks and knives there, turkey, potatoes, squash, green beans, stuffing, cranberry salad. I put the second leaf in for you all. I hope you're happy. So, thanks for coming to Thanksgiving. I love you all. It's the end of the night, or almost the end of the night. We're gonna eat this tart, clear the table, put away the leftovers, start our leftover turkey broth, drink the rest of this wine, um, and keep hanging out forever and ever. So thank you so much for coming to my Thanksgiving, and um, I hope to see you next year. And that's a wrap! Okay, now we listen to music. Okay.